Hello and welcome to Tuesday Truth or Treasure. My name is Leticia and I'm happy you could join me today. Um, it's a little bit later than I normally post, but I want I, I didn't post last week. I'm sorry about that. And I wanted to make sure to hop on this time because I want to talk about a subject that is really uh, something that I st struggled with. And I think it's a very practical application of how we can apply God's word. Um, and I also have a testimony about it. So it's two things. So <laughs> I was excited to share this today. Uh, before we get started, let's pray and then we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for the opportunity to come together, for the opportunity of me to share my testimony and do exactly as it says in Psalms 107 too. Thank you, Lord, for letting me tell my story. Thank you for giving me clarity in what I should do. Thank you, Lord, for helping me always. You are good and you are merciful and so, so kind to me. I uh, pray that I would say only what you would want me to say and nothing else, and that you would let me remove any and all distractions, um, and that you would soften the, the listener's hearts to be able to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So we, as you know, I've been going down the uh, other website. I have a website that I own uh, called prayfierce.com, and they're all basically a collection of prayers uh, by emotion and n most of them I wrote when I was going through that very emotion some of them I wrote for other people and I, we're actually getting close to one that I wrote for someone um, else so I'll explain it when I get there but this one I wrote for myself and it was when I was having a really hard time making a decision um, on something and I didn't know what to do and I was so scared to make the wrong decision and um, so that's what this particular prayer is about. And it's specifically for clarity. So um, I'm going to just read it and then I'm going to go into it. Lord, thank you for being my counselor. Thank you for being 100% available to me when I need you. I'm so scared of making the wrong decision. I am unsure of the direction I should go and I really need clarity. Lord, I don't want to decide something that's wrong and will later hurt me. Please be with me and help me discern what I should do. Help me hear your word guiding my way. Your word says to call to you and that you will answer me and tell me great and hidden things that I do not know. Lord, I am calling you now. Give me direction. Please instruct me in the way that I should go. I need wisdom for this decision and I'm asking you just like your word says that I should. Lord, remind me that you did not give me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Now that I have placed this in your hands, I will not worry about this decision or the outcome because I know you have great plans for my future. Thank you for your peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, sometimes for these stories, um, I had a very specific thing going on at the time. Actually, for most of them, it is it is like that. So I was going through something very specific and I could not get this thing out of my head. And it was almost like God was, I, I feel at the time that I was feeling those emotions extra strong so that I could write these prayers. So every time I read these prayers, especially some of the others like on fear and um, on feeling alone, when I read them again, I'm like, ugh, I feel... I get it like it's like that prayer is exactly what I would pray even if I would pray now. So if I was feeling that emotion. So when I read them again, I, I am almost like transported back to that time when I was feeling like that. And I I wanted to explain why I wrote that. Sometimes I don't say it in the beginning in, in this website. Why? Because I don't want people to think, oh, that's such a dumb reason. Like when we get to the financial one, when I tell you the real story why I wrote it, I mean it's I could almost roll my own eyes at my own self right now for why I worried so much about it. It's almost silly when people have really big financial problems to worry about. Um, but it was what I was worried about at the time, you know? And so I feel like God uses all these things for his glory. And here for this clarity, um, I was very, very, very nervous about um, school, my kids' school. So what happened is... They were zoned, we were living in a different house and they were zoned to a different school. 
And so uh, the school that they were gonna be zoned to was not a good school and I did not want either one of them to go there. I could not afford to put them both in private school. So I was coming to a decision where, what am I gonna do? And at just the right time, there was a new alternative charter school that was opening up close to our house that was um, gonna be centered around sports. And I really felt strongly I don't know why I felt this, and I can tell you that I felt a release from this feeling, but I felt strongly like I needed to, the, the, the vision that the lady had for this school was very good, like a super good vision. And um, she was also a fellow Christian, and I felt like I needed to support her in this decision. And I, I, I was nerve wracking because it was the first year that school was open. It was a charter school. Things were completely different than the public school. They were still trying to figure things out. And I was trying to make that decision. Should I send them there? Should I send them over here? Should I do this? Should I do that? And I kept second guessing that decision. I mean, I'm talking over and over and over again. Should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Should I? And I just wasn't sure. And I especially in those months in the initial months things were very rough because things were very unstructured things were going wrong and i wasn't sure what i should do but i really kept going back to i really felt like god led me to make the decision to i felt very strongly that i needed to support her and i don't know why i felt like that i still to this day i don't know what made me feel like that i wish i could remember but i would go back and i would second guess and I thought you know what God would not want to harm my children it's not like he's gonna ask me to do something and then mess them up because of it you know like now they're behind on everything or whatever no it wasn't like that so I knew that if he's help if he wants me to support this lady and keep my kids in the school he's not gonna damage them as a part of it um so while they were there they both still passed their standardized tests, which I thought was a very big deal at the time, because if they weren't learning, then they wouldn't have been able to do that. And there was, um, and they both like learned different things that they wouldn't have probably been taught in public school or wouldn't have been interested. Like for example, Eli, uh, my son realized that he liked debate. I mean, that's a weird thing, right? For, uh, I never would have thought he liked debate, but that school taught him that. Now he didn't go on and pursue it, which I wish he would have, but he really learned that he liked to debate. And I could see that maybe in the future, God might use that to be able to debate, you know, his word, to be able to uh, challenge people or you know, in a different way than I do, to be able to maybe potentially be an evangelist and be able to um, argue uh, with the word, you know, like an apologetic type um, person. That's what kind of like what the impression I was getting, but I'm just saying, um, I just felt like that was like a new thing, you know, that I wouldn't have, that I wouldn't have expected them to get. So they got really good things. But during that time, I second guessed this decision so much. And so when I wrote this prayer down, it was, it was because I was so scared. I was so scared that I was going to make the wrong decision. And so I prayed, Lord, do not let me make the wrong decision. And the thing is, God says, and here in Isaiah 30, 21, so I'm, I don't have anything written down, but I'm going to just look it up, Isaiah 3021. Hang on with me. Isaiah 3021. You will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, follow it, whether it turns to the right or to the left. Do you see that? It says, You will hear a voice behind you saying, and I just, I took that to heart. Like, I'm, he's going to speak to me. I'm going to know exactly what I should do because he's going to tell me what to do. And I, and that's why I put it in this prayer. Help me to hear your word guiding my way. So help me to hear you. Because sometimes we allow so many distractions to come in that we don't, God might be trying to communicate to us and we're not hearing that communication. Um, the other thing is uh, Jeremiah uh, 33. 33 3 so i i clung on these verses and i was saying you're what you say you say call on me and i will tell you it says uh, call to me and i will answer you i will tell you great and mysterious things you do not know and i'm calling on him and he's he says call to me and i'm gonna tell you all these things that you don't know james 1 5 says if you lack knowledge ask right just ask so i asked and that's the whole point of this prayer if you don't know what you need to do and if you're having trouble making a decision ask ask 
He is, he, and then don't worry. Philippians 4, 6 says, pray about everything, but don't worry, don't worry about anything and pray about everything and give thanksgiving. So that's what I did. I really took it to heart. He's telling me to ask. He says he's going to direct me in the way that I should go. He says he's going to, he's, if I call to you, he's going to tell me great and hidden things I do not know. So when I was trying to figure out what school to send her to, I thought, I'm not going to be afraid because I am not supposed to have a spirit of fear. I'm just going to call to the Lord, pray to the Lord, and make sure that I make the right decision. And he led me right. He did not lead me astray. Also, even before that school, there was a time when I had to decide uh, whether to homeschool her or not. Now, I wasn't going to homeschool her. Someone else was. But that was a very big switch from being um, in public school to doing this homeschool. And... I second guess that decision. I can't even tell you how many times for sixth grade, her entire sixth grade, she did that. And I was so stressed out about this. So the things that I stressed out about, I wish I would have known then what I know now, like stop worrying, <laughs> pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. Um, so the reason I was just, I wanted to, um, let me give you a couple more examples and then I'll tell you the testimony. Okay. So when I had to, even even just recently, when I had to turn down um, a job offer, and I did a whole video on it uh, when I used God's word to make a decision, um, I turned down the job offer because I, and I had never turned down a job offer, and I was worried. Um, I was worried that I was going to accept the wrong, you know, accept the wrong job offer. I don't want to be in the wrong place, right, that God doesn't want me to be. If I would have accepted that job offer, first, I'm sorry, let me slow down. When I turned down that job offer, I had just gotten laid off. So literally the day that I got laid off, I had an interview. And then the next week they offered me a job. I think... Part of it, you know, I was able to make the decision. Part of it because I just lost my job. I got the job offer so soon. It was easy. I was able to line it up to where I'm like, this isn't my job. And so I was able to reject it, you know, pretty easily. When month and month and month passed that I didn't have a job, I got to tell you that I went, I have rethought about that. Should I have accepted it? I started thinking, what if I never get a job? But I always came back to, no. I know exactly why I rejected it. I rejected it because this, 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 things didn't line up with the word. So if I would have accepted that job, I wouldn't, I would have taken a pay cut, 30% pay cut. Um, I would have worked home, but I would have taken a 30% pay cut. Now I'm at a job where I'm back. I'm kind of like back where I used to work, but I'm able to work from home, but I got a 10% raise. So not only did I get a raise, but I, I didn't take a pay cut. I got a raise and I'm working from home and I'm working in somewhere where I'm familiar very close to my house if I needed to drive in. So things, if I would have taken that lesser job, I wouldn't have been available for the bigger job. Do you see? But God was preparing me for that. But I had to go through a season where I was waiting, where I wasn't sure, did I make the wrong decision? When I accepted my initial job, even at this company, um, I, I prayed, Lord, please, 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 please don't let me accept the wrong job offer. Please, please. Please make it so obvious. Well, the day that I got the job offer, it was on a Sunday. It was on the day that I, ha I had just signed up to go on a mission trip. I had no idea where I had. I didn't. I didn't have a job. I don't even know why I did that. <laughs> but I signed. I committed to go on a mission trip. And then I found out that that mission trip was to go to an orphanage in Haiti. I didn't know where it was going. I just signed up. I'm like, I'm going on a mission. I've always wanted to go. I've never been able to because I work. I'm doing it this year. The day that I did it, I found out it was going to Haiti. I found out it was going to an orphanage. I'm an orphan. I found out that mission trip was leaving on the day that I became an orphan. All things that I felt like, whoa. Um, and then that day, I got a job offer. So I'm like, I'm supposed to take that job. I told him I'd think about it, but really, I already knew that's my job. I asked God, make it so apparent to me. And I felt like that was very apparent. When I was, when we were, I'm giving you like several examples. When I was, when we were looking to buy a house, I did not want to make a wrong decision on a house. Lord, don't put me in a house that I don't belong. I don't want to be in the wrong house. And um, I, it was between a couple of houses. And um, when it came time to deciding, I noticed something in the paperwork and it was exactly the same number as a lot that we own somewhere else. So it was like this lot and that lot had the exact same number. 
And I thought, that's the house. We're supposed to put, that's it. It's like I knew. It was like with that number, God showed me, that's it. That's yours. And when we got into a bidding, got into a little bit of a bidding war, um, I knew the exact price because that's the exact price that I'd gotten approved for initially. So we tried to negotiate down on another house. It wasn't taken. We tried to negotiate up somewhere else. It wasn't taken. But on this house, I said, this is the original number that I got back in the day. This was the first number that I was approved for. That's going to be the amount. And they came back and they said, we're ha somebody else is countering you. Do you want to change your offer? And I said, no, I'm we're keeping it as is with what we had. And we won out because I just knew this is my house. It was the lot numbers. It was just, it was like, I knew God gave me so much peace about it. I knew. Um, so there's been time after time again, but it, it's because I've prayed and I said, Lord, guide me. I don't want to make a decision. You said to ask you. You said that you would tell me great and hidden things I do not know. You said that if I like knowledge, I should ask. Please don't let me get outside of your will or do something that I'm not supposed to be doing. So because I pray in this way, then I he guides me in what I should do. And it become, it's like a, there's many choices, but the one choice is lit up. And sometimes it feels a little bit scary, but I'm like, that's what I should do. And I'm able to go confidently in it. Now, sometimes I walk a couple steps and I'm like, should I have done it? But I always go back and I'm like, no, that I would do it again. If it happened again, I would do that same thing again. Um, another thing, I actually, I just, I'm going to tell you one more and then I'm going to tell you the official testimony. So last time around this year, <laughs> can you tell I'm tired? Last year around this time, I was, uh, we were going to go on a trip and I had been off of work for you know a month or so i still had money but i was starting to get a little bit nervous about should i really be spending i haven't found a job yet so maybe it was it was a little later in the month um at the end of the month beginning of next month but last year and i decided i just i did it wasn't that i it wasn't that i wanted it wasn't that i didn't have the money i had the money to go i was just worried about not getting a job so i was saving it so i the Lord kind of brought to my mind how the Israelites were hoarding the manna, sort of like holding on to something because they were afraid there wasn't going to be something else. Um, and so it's like if I didn't go on the trip, it was sort of like saying, I don't trust that you're going to provide for me. Um, so I'm going to hoard on to what I have right now just in case you don't. That's how I felt like God was showing me what I was doing. So I said, I have to go on this trip regardless. And I was I was worried. I, I didn't think I was scared to run out of money that's what it was i was scared to run out of money i had the money i was scared to run out of money i shared about it on my facebook page for no like i didn't want anybody to help me i wasn't saying i was i was sharing it because i think we do that and so to me it's a testimony to share that same day later on that night somebody called me and said uh, God really put it on my heart to send you some money. And I was like, no, 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 I don't need money. Don't, I have the money. I'm just deciding, should I spend it on this? No, don't, please don't. Because I always think about so-and-so needs more money than me. So-and-so needs more money than me. So I hate to take from people that I feel like really need it. You know, when I have like a, when I have it, I'm just, you know, not using it. But they said, no, I really felt like the Lord wanted me to give this to you. And um, they sent me a, um, they send me a thousand dollars. That's never happened to me before or after. <laughs> um, that was more than enough to cover the whole trip because it wasn't like we were going anywhere extravagant. We we're gonna drive somewhere. We we're gonna go with my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law. We were driving. It was gonna be like a a two-night trip or even a one-night trip. I don't remember, but it was something short. Uh, so it wasn't like we were gonna need to spend a lot of money. And um, so that that money more than covered the trip and everything we like our full total expenses. Um, and I just thought God is so good, even with these silly little things he provided. Um, so anyway, the main testimony that I wanted to share is um, that. The, so I guess I've shared all of these because I wanted to give you tangible examples of how God has answered a pr my prayer for clarity time and time again. And that's one of the things that I hear people asking for is decision making. How do I know? I don't know what to decide. Ask. 
He'll tell you. He'll give it to you. He's not, he says, if you search for me, you're going to find me. He's not trying to hide. If you want, if you want, if your kid came to you and said, mom, what should I do? Would you not tell them? Would you not, if you're like, if they're like, please tell me, I really want to know what you think. Would you be like, nah, never mind, not today, I'm not going to tell you. No, there's no way you would do that. So why would God do that? He's, he wants to show you. We just need to be able to listen and hear. So I worried again, the very, the reason why I wrote this prayer, the main reason initially when I wrote it, though I've used it time and time, the main reason I wrote it was because of my kid's school. And I was very worried about my daughter specifically and all of that. Am I missing her up? Well, God has come through time and time again for her. And I had another testimony where I talked about how she got accepted into a school and just blessing upon blessing that she's gotten. But she had just taken, uh, she had taken a certified medical examiner test and it's a state test. Um, she took a class in high school. She took the test in high school and this would allow her to be able to work as a medical assistant in a doctor's office. And so she had taken the test and had failed by three points the first time. And so um, she took it again and she passed. She passed the test. I know it seems like a little thing, but I just think I worried so much <laughs> about what school she was going to go to in ninth grade and that I made the wrong decision in sixth grade and that um, she wasn't where she was supposed to be. But I even heard her when we went to register her for classes. Um, her advisor was telling her, well, this is, you'll see this in the syllabus. And she said, I know what a syllabus is. We used to have it in my sixth grade when we did homeschool with those teachers. So she knew how to manage her workload. She knows how to read a syllabus. These are little practical things, but I just, I think, I think when God comes through for you, it's great. Like it's wonderful and magnificent. But when you see him come through for your kids, that's like next level, right? It feels like, like you really love me, God. You know, because to come through for me, it's awesome. I mean, I'm not, I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's like somebody does something good for you, that's great. But when they do it for your kids, you just feel it, you know, really strong. So that's, I just, I, um, I'm so grateful and so thankful. And um, I just, want to encourage you that if you need help making a decision there is not one thing that the bible doesn't cover he speaks to us through his word if you're not reading your word if you're not getting in your word if you're not praying you might be missing out on an answer he might be trying to give you the answer of the very thing you want to know but you haven't you haven't opened up your bible to get it so go to him if you have a question ask him he says Ask me, ask and you shall receive. If you lack wisdom, ask. <laughs> so uh, time and time again, he's there for us. He promises to tell us things if we go to him, if we ask him. So it takes a humility um, and uh, surrender to be able to do that. Anyway, I'm sorry I felt like I was all over the place, but I hope that these examples, that one of them sort of, related to you or affected you uh, but i hope that you help it, it'll help you to hear god's voice or at least to pray in such a way to help you hear god's word voice better uh, see you next time talk to you later bye